Hey there, I'm Angela Sharp, and welcome to The Daily Mix. I hope you had a great weekend. It was, uh, you know, kind of a nicer weekend, which is kind of lovely weather. I actually had Saturday off. I never have Saturday off, not in the summer anyway. So what did I decide to do? I signed myself up for a car show. <laughs> so my friends from the I-55 Firebird Club were going to this car show out in Edwardsville, and I thought it'd be fun. Now this right here, that is my favorite part is the driving in line with all the other Firebirds and Trans Ams. I think there was 23 of us total in the show, Firebird Trans Ams. Obviously there's a lot more cars than just that in the show. But this right here is my favorite part. This was also very cool. After the car show, we went, really sad story. Um, a guy lost his dad at a pretty young age, I think 52. And he had a Firebird Trans Am. One of the other guys in the club fixed it up for him and was able to give it to him this day. So we all went to their house for that. Now that was cool. The part I hate is, is the car show part. I love going to car shows. I love walking around car shows, but then I want to be able to leave. And they kind of trap you in there. You're not allowed to drive your car in or out. So there's Skylar right there with all her Firebird Trans Am friends. But I don't like to actually be stuck in a car show. Now if it's a car show that they let you leave, I'll do that next time, but I don't like being trapped. I don't have the patience for that. Now, I don't think you can see, but I've got my hot air balloon necklace and earrings on because it's that time of the year. The Great Forest Park balloon race is right around the corner, and I've got Jessica Stegen and Dan Shetler. They're going to be here to tell us everything we need to know. You know Jessica. She's been on the show before, right? She tells us about the planning and the times. Well, Dan is one of the Fab Four. He started in year two. He's one of the founders, so I'm sure he's got a lot of stories for that. That's going to be coming up next, so let's get started on today's Daily Mix. Great news for the city of St. Louis. This past Friday, Comptroller Darlene Green announced that the city closed its fiscal year 2022 with a $49.4 million surplus in its operating budget. Despite pandemic related challenges, the city was able to outperform fiscal expectations. The surplus will allow St. Louis to keep making critical investments in the city's workforce and capital improvements, with half of the balance being transferred to the capital fund. Now we all know that disasters and emergencies can happen at any time, but how many of us are prepared for one? I'm not. September is National Preparedness Month, and this year's theme is a lasting legacy. The life you built is worth protecting, so take time this month to prepare for the unexpected and create a lasting legacy for you and your family. You can find helpful tips on making a plan, building a kit, and more at Ready. Gov. Now, September is also National Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. SLOCA, St. Louis Ovarian Cancer Awareness, is ramping up efforts to educate St. Louis women and promote early detection by teaching them to watch for the signs. Now, there's four signs that most women are diagnosed with ovarian cancer have one or more of them. They are bloating, pelvic or abdominal pain, urinary urgency, and difficulty eating. Throughout September and October, they're hosting several events, including the 10th annual Teal Toes for Sloka. This fun event features raffles, prizes, treats throughout the day, and of course the proceeds support ovarian cancer research. Pamper yourself for a good cause on September 20th at Nail Pro in Despair for 10 to 8 p.m. Now that's a good way. You get your nails done and it goes to a good cause. You can also rock it and run for ovarian cancer. In October, the annual Families Run for Ovarian Cancer Rockstar 5K and One Mile Run Walk will have fun for the whole family with music, food trucks, and a bubble bus. This is set for Sunday, October 9th at Soldiers Memorial. You can learn more about SLOCA and all of the events they have planned at sloka.org. Now, Frizz Fest returns this weekend. They were on last year to talk about this, but they're back with even more ways to promote self-love and inspire confidence. 
This natural beauty festival is fun for all ages and they have everything from music, yoga, natural hair demos, and they have a VIP beauty lounge, which is new. Now this is gonna have pony rides, face painting, arts and crafts. They'll also have a variety of vendors, food trucks, prizes, and more. It's all free. The fifth annual Frizz Fest is set for Saturday, September 17th, from noon until six at Tower Grove Park. You can find all the details at frizzybynature.com. This weekend, you can also join St. Louis Stitchers for the final dance battle of their Pick the City Up Tour. The program was created to bring the art of the forefront for teens and young adults by using a unique form of urban storytelling. The event will feature local black artists creating and performing alongside black youth ages 16 to 24 in high quality musical performances and dance battles. Cash prizes will be awarded to the top performers. The event is free and family friendly and will take place this Saturday at St. Louis Artworks on Del Mar. For more information, go to storystitchers.org. Another event happening this weekend is Knockout Bullying Amateur Boxing Showcase presented by Box Culture. See the next generation of St. Louis boxing stars on display in SDL versus Everybody 3. During the action-packed night, local boxing prospects will take on fighters from across the country while bringing awareness to bullying and its effects on mental health. This family-friendly event will take place this Saturday at South Broadway Athletic Club. For tickets and more information, go to sdlverseeverybody3.eventbrite.com. Now this Thursday, the Gateway Arch will be celebrating the 101st birthday of Dick Bowser. That is the inventor of the Arch's tram ride to the top. How cool is that? And get this, you're invited too. All day long, they're gonna offer free birthday cupcakes, a selfie station, short film discounts on, and of course discounts on the Cable Arch gift, plus much more. There'll also be special speaker series from one to two. You can find all the details about the celebration under the events tab at gatewayarch.com. This weekend, the Gateway Arch Park Foundation will host its first ever Greeter St. Louis Volunteer Fair at the Gateway Arch. Come out and learn about local nonprofits, their missions, and how to get involved with the fair. This will run from 10 to 4 this Saturday outside the west entrance of the arch. For more information, go to archpark.org and look under the events section. Now there's a new family adventure that is now opened at the St. Louis Aquarium at Union Station. It's Pirate Quest for Sunken Treasure. It's transformed the aquarium into a wonderland of pirate ship scenes and treasure caves. Now you can follow the quest clues throughout the habitats in the hands-on animal adventures and you discover the pirate captain's journal full of clues. There's gonna be animal facts and jokes. Kids who complete the quest will get a reward at the end of the journey. Pirate Quest for Sunken Treasure is free with the aquarium admission and open through October 31st. For tickets and more information, visit stlouisaquarium.com. Now a new romantic comedy filmed entirely in the St. Louis area is now available for streaming. It's called Doubting Tom and it's based on U City resident Vanessa Roman's love for Dart League and Oscar Wilde, of course. It follows the breakup of Tom and Gwen, uncovering secrets, lies, and hijinks that ensue at Blueberry Hill. Take a look. I just feel in my heart we're destined to be together. My mom had a sixth sense about these things. I must have been seven or eight. Mama told me when I grow up, I'm gonna marry Tom. With these feelings I feel when I speak, it's not the words that I say. Gwen? I love you. I want you to marry me. Gwen is convinced that she's destined to marry a guy named Tom. I know you're hiding something. So suspicious. With good reason. Goodbye, Tom. We broke up. I just couldn't keep up the lie. My name's not really Tom. What is your name? It's Frank. <laughs> No way. I'm sure there's hundreds of single Toms out there. We'll find you a rich Tom or one with a private jet. It's not just about the name. She loves you, you know. Go win her back. 
My name is Tom. I'm Tom. I am so totally Tom. <laughs> Seems like all along it's been vitally important for me to be Tom. I watched that trailer three times, and that was the first time I noticed a friend of mine is actually in that trailer. That's cool, actually. Uh, Doubting Tom is available now on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play, so you can stream that. I'm going to get really giddy here, you guys. I'm very <laughs> excited. I've got Jessica Sagan and Dan Shetler here with me. Now, Jessica, I, you've been on the show before. Yes, Communications I love it. director, mm -hmm. event production, and you were one of the Fab Four, one of the founders. That's correct. Okay, so let's kind of back up for people who maybe aren't as familiar as I am. Sure. This is my favorite event that ever happens in St. Louis. Jessica, can you kind of give us the Cliff Notes version of what's happening? Sure, of course. It's our favorite event of the year, too. I think this past weekend's weather really gets us ready for the Great Force Park Balloon Race. It's sort of the epitome of fall. Uh, we have two days of family fun. It's a free event for all to attend. You can park for free. You can bring your own picnic. But we also have a wide variety of concessions. We'll have Blue Moon beer on site. But Friday night is the glow. That's when all the balloons will tether and stay in one place and glow like lanterns. They fire their burners all at the same time. It's beautiful. You can come down to the park around 5 o'clock on Friday to get things started. We recommend coming early and checking out our website for all of our road closure maps. Uh, the balloons will start glowing around 7. We have the Golden Knight skydiving team, which is special for our 50th oh. anniversary. They're diving Friday night with pyro and everything. It's going to be super fun. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and then we end the night Friday night with our PNC Bank fireworks finale. Now, Saturday, we're back again, starting at 1 o'clock, and we just prep for the entire day is all about going towards the race. But we have a wide variety of festival activities. There's tons of stuff for kids to do at the event. There's inflatables. Um, PNC Bank brings out their mobile learning adventure. The Purina Pro Plan Performance Team will perform on Saturday. And then around 3 o'clock, the skydivers hit the field again. We do our opening ceremonies, and then our pilots get ready for the big race. Uh, and we launch the balloon somewhere between 4 and 5.30 based on wind conditions that day. Oh my gosh. It, it is the most fun if you've never been to the Great Forest Park Balloon Race. It is the most fun thing. I started going with my family when I was just a baby. We would sit across the street and my dad would chase the balloons and help them land. And my dad and I still do it to this day. So Dan, being one of the founders, the, the, the Fab Four, you said you started in year two. 1974 is when we started. Holy cow, okay. So how did you get involved? You saw that they did this one year and you're like, I wanna be a part of this? So um, it, it's an interesting story because in uh, May of 1974, one of my now partners, Ted Staley, was down in um, Lubbock, Texas, uh, visiting his in-laws, and he saw a hot air balloon flying across the farmland. He chased, uh, chased the balloon. When he landed, uh, Ted was able to talk him into giving him a ride. He came back to St. Louis and he was so excited, he was determined to get into ballooning. But he had to find some friends to help him. You can't do ballooning by yourself. Right. He didn't have enough friends. So he <laughs> talked to friends who talked to friends who talked to friends, and eventually we got 20 people to go to Ted's house. Ted found an old balloon in Illinois that uh, a fellow brought down to sell, and he made this sales pitch to these 20 guys, most of whom got up and left. At the end of the day, there were four of us there who said, this is something we really want to do. We didn't know each other, and uh, since then, we started this, bought a balloon, and uh, been good friends ever since. I love this so much. Now, then obviously, you've been around from year two. You've seen this grow and get bigger and bigger every right. year. Right. And, and what does that mean to you, to be able to see something that you kind of help start? becomes so large. Yeah, so so it was so important to us. We took over running the race in 1978, and uh, we, we've run it for 30 years since. Um, it, it was always so important to us to have it be a free family event in St. Louis. Uh, it's a very unusual race because it's the only balloon race that takes off in a major metropolitan area. All the rest of them are out 
you know, in farmland somewhere, which is great. Which is a lot easier to land, though, out in oh, farmland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've landed in a Kentucky Fried Chicken parking lot with uh, <laughs> no room at all to uh, take the balloon down. So it, it's exciting, but it's also very special because it's so unusual. Right, absolutely. I, and I can even just say, from my own personal experience, like I said, when we were little, we would follow, and I still do now, we will sit across the street and we would chase balloons <clears> and help them land. Back when I was little, like five and six, there was not that many cars doing that. Now, there's so many cars that sit right. across the street and chase them and try to help them land. Right, right, right. So right. as a pilot, then this is a good question for you, Dan, when these people are showing up and coming, is that cool or is it kind of like stay back, watch yourself? I'm sure you're trying to protect everybody yeah. as well. Yeah, well, we let them uh, get close to the balloons, but uh, it's for safety purposes, it's best to have them behind a, a, a rope line. We, uh, mm -hmm. we had a real interesting uh, situation in 1975 when the balloon race was always at Cricket Field, which isn't that far from the zoo. So we had our balloons set up and the crowds behind this rope, and still they're very close. And I have the balloon inflated and up overhead and I'm just about ready to take off. And one of my partners had rented a gorilla costume. <laughs> and he comes lumbering through the crowd from the direction of the zoo, jumps through the crowd over the rope, and just as I'm taking off, he jumps into the balloon. You didn't know that he was doing this? Oh, yeah. Oh, you didn't know, okay. <laughs> but none of the crowd did. Right. And the, the kids that were out there were, I mean, just scared to death that this gorilla had escaped. So, uh, so it was a lot of fun. That is so it, much fun. Yeah, we had a lot of So the people really enjoy it. They come out. And uh, for many years, it was just the balloon race. But in the mid-'90s, uh, we uh, decided to add a balloon glow on uh, Friday night. Which used to be a drive-through event. People could just yeah. drive their cars and see, and now there's so many people, you yeah. can't let them drive through. The police department got so tired of having this crowd going all the way down Hampton Avenue and all the way out 40, winding through the, uh, you know, the park, that they finally said, y you have to do something different. So that's when we went to Central Field and, and uh, do the balloon glow there. So mm. that's I, good. I love that so much. Now, Jessica, kind of getting the, all this production in sure. order and everything. That's a whole year event, I imagine. It is, but it's frankly all about still having fun. We're still, we're not bringing any gorilla costumes out this year, as far as I know. Are you sure? But as, <laughs> Don't say as, things you that's can't true. commit to. That's true. <laughs> but as part of our 50th uh, annual celebration, we are bringing an 80-foot, 807-pound birthday cake to the event. It's what? a hot air balloon birthday cake. You're kidding. Uh, yes, Schnooks Markets is helping <gasps> us bring it, and on Saturday we're going to actually have slices of birthday cake so everyone can sing with us and say happy birthday. And, I mean, this event is such a, a beautiful thing that has grown so organically. Six balloons, handful of spectators in 1973, and now we have over 100,000 people over two days. We have 51 balloons coming. By the way, we also have a couple other fun shapes. We have crispy bacon, the the hot air balloon pig. Oh my goodness. Uh, we have Augie the friendly dragon coming this year and uh, we have a fish. Finley the fish is also joining us. Also among the other traditional shaped balloons which are just stunning as well. Well I mean yeah I, hot air balloons in general are, are my favorite thing yeah. but then you know I'm gonna revert back to my childhood when I see these right. different shapes those have to be a lot harder to fly I would imagine. Oh yeah. For many years, we had the Energizer Bunny, mm -hmm. and it flew for, oh, 15, 20 years, and it is a very, very difficult balloon to, uh, to fly, and especially to land. Just the way it's made, you'd like it to fly face first, so people looking at it, but it doesn't. It right. flies. <laughs> it flies any way it wants. Yeah, <laughs> any way it wants, but typically the face back. And so it, uh, it's good for the crowd because they, they're looking at it, it goes away, but it was, it's 170 feet tall, right. so it is a very hard thing to land. And, uh, well, I uh, remember sitting across with Dad, and that would be one of the first ones that would go up, yeah. and we wouldn't be able to see any balloons, but you could see the ears mm -hmm. yeah. of the bunny, and then I'd be like, oh, let's go, let's go, and he'd be like, calm down, <laughs> they have to get up in there yeah. and go, like, but exactly. you know, as a kid, you just want to go in and then chase them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Last year, Jessica was nice enough to put me in one, and up there to see all those balloons around you, and like when you take off, 
I started to cry a little bit because it was the coolest experience of my life. Yeah, yeah. Is it still like that for you every oh, time? Ab absolutely. And and over the years, you have these special moments that you remember that uh, that are particularly interesting. I recall. Uh, in the 80s, um, Anheuser Busch was a sponsor, and the Bush balloon was in town, and we were going to the towards Illinois. And as the uh, day uh, dragged along, the wind died down, and the Bush balloon stopped dead over the Mississippi, right in the middle of the Mississippi River, at about 100 feet high, and is running out of fuel. This was not a pretty picture. <laughs> He was able to call the police. The police called somebody in the Port Authority, and a tugboat with a barge you were kidding. came out underneath the balloon, and he landed the balloon on a barge in the middle of Mississippi. In 50 years, there's a lot yeah. of good stories. Yeah. Gonna, that, that is that's the most, right. That's the best story I've ever heard. I remember watching one land on the side of the highway once, and I thought that was cool, but that's a better story. There, there are a lot of them like that. Yeah. So um, yeah. on Friday, when you guys are lighting up your balloons, people are able to kind of walk around. Is it cool if they come up and maybe ask you a question or oh, two about I, your balloon? The pilots just love it. Um, this is another thing that's kind of different about Forest Park. A lot of places that do balloon blows don't let the people come up to the balloons. Right. Uh, but thankfully, just our relationship with the FAA and the police, and they know that we have things pretty well under control. So years ago, we decided that once the balloons are up, to let people on the field. And I think that's the most popular part of the weekend. These that's people great. can come up. The balloonists just yeah. love answering questions. And uh, it, it's a really exciting, put kids in the basket and so uh, cool. fire the burners and all that. It's it's really special. Dan, I feel like I could talk to you for days. No, I, <laughs> there's a lot of stories. There's so many stories. Yeah. I'm so yeah. excited. Yeah. But well, unfortunately, we're out of time. So Jessica, can I get all those details? Yes. Again, that's what people need to know yeah. so they can plan their weekend. Right. I know I talked about a lot of really cool things going on this weekend. You got to get to the Great Forest Park Balloon Race. So, GreatForestParkBalloonRace.com is the absolute best place to land, pun intended. Uh, I like it. Right? <laughs> so we have the full schedule of events for the whole weekend there. We have a tab called Getting Around, which shows all the road closures in the park. There's plenty of parking in the park. Street parking is available. Um, all of that is free, but please look at that ahead of time because uh, it will really help you navigate. And don't forget, there's um, an entrance off of Lindell. There's entrances off of Kings Highway. You don't have to come in at Hampton. Um, you can come in other ways. So check out the website and follow us on social. We're going to be posting lots of pictures. We'll go live on Facebook throughout the event as well. Very cool. So mm -hmm. on Friday is the Balloon Glow. On Saturday, all the festivities, including the big race. I will be across the street with my dad. <laughs> I'm going to have to find out what balloon uh, you're in so uh, I can follow yeah, you. There you go. That's my I'd new like plan. That. Definitely check out the Great Forest Park Balloon Race. Like I said, my favorite event of all time <laughs> in St. Louis. After you follow them, make sure you follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. You can drop us a line at the Daily Mix at stltv.net. That's going to do it for us. We keep it right here on STL TV and Experience St. Louis. See you next time. Oh, yes. No, I really do love this.